Hello everyone, finally I have actually got Overwatch and I've been pretty excited to play this game since its first announcement like a year and a half ago. So in this video I'm just going to go over some of the general basics of it and give you my thoughts. So starting off on the main menu there's nothing too unfamiliar with the play and training buttons. In the hero gallery it shows you all the heroes that you can play with in the game. In here you can also find the cosmetic things that you can unlock such as skins, emotes and voice lines which we see in a lot of games now. As you can see, these all vary uh, in cost of the in-game currency. And to be honest, some of these are actually pretty awesome looking, so they've done really well with this side of the game. And of course, with any game that has cosmetics like this, CSGO, uh, League, I would imagine they will be adding more throughout the game's lifespan. These ones here have to be my favorite, the highlight intros. Some of these are really cool, and I think, to be honest, every hero has really, really good ones. And these are probably the first things that I'd look at unlocking. So yeah, there's 21 heroes in the game at the moment and all the info you need on them is in this screen. Apart from that, you also have loot crates which you get I believe after leveling up. There's also probably other ways to get them but I haven't really looked into it. These are basically like your card packs in Hearthstone or something. This is where you can unlock the cosmetic stuff I just showed you. And this stuff comes in rarity as well I believe. Which is why this one is probably pink, most likely epic, while blue is rare and white is common. And so on, standard colours of rarity. So, not really much else to show you in terms of the menu, which wouldn't take up the entire video, so let's just get into a game. So, like in any mobile, or really any MMO or RPG, you have four classes. Uh, you have attack or damage, you have the tank, healer, and in this case, like a defense or support. In this video, I'm playing the hero Pharah, which is a damage dealer. Uh, each hero obviously has a variety of skills. Much like MOBAs, you have an ultimate ability, which you can see will be charging. It's in the middle of my screen, currently on 0% because we haven't started yet. This charges by dealing damage, and I believe even taking damage because if you're a tank, uh, it basically charges when you're getting well stuck into the game. Uh, along with this, I also have a skill on my E, which is to knock back enemies, and my shift allows me to boost high into the air. Some heroes are more advanced than others with their abilities because Everything in this game is very diverse. So at this point, we're just waiting for the game to start. Uh, we are the attacking team, and in this game mode, we have to take two points. Firstly, having to take point A, and then obviously point B. Since I only got this game yesterday, I'm not very accustomed to the map layouts at all. Uh, all the maps are quite large, or they feel quite large at this point, probably because I don't actually know them. Uh, and there's a lot of places you can go, especially as some heroes can teleport, or blink, or fly, and so on. So you can get to heights and stuff like that. Visually, I think the game is quite pleasing. It's been very well made. It's quite beautiful looking in some places. Uh, right now I'm playing on max settings and I'm getting a solid 110 FPS, which it seems to be capped at, as you can see in the top left. There's probably a way to uncap that, but I haven't looked into it. Uh, it feels nice though, like to move around. It feels so much smoother to play than CSGO for me when I move around. At this point I'm playing max settings just because it's a new game and there's no other reason to play it otherwise but if I was to play this game in any competitive setting then like any game I'd turn those graphics down. So right now we just need to get out of this entrance really. Uh, this seems to be the only entrance out and the defense are obviously set up to hold it. This game is highly reliant on team play so when you're playing solo like I am now the attacking side can sometimes be quite hard because it needs to be really coordinated. I'm just spamming rockets really trying to hit anything. I'm about to get my ultimate, so when I do, I'm going to go in and try and kill some to open up for my team to push through while they're respawning. Here we go. Well, I'm dead. I killed two though, so hopefully my team have the brains to push through now. Probably should have tried to kill Widowmaker first, but oh well. Seems my team pushed through as we are taking the objective. One thing I do find sometimes quite annoying about this game is how far away you spawn from your team or the objective. Like... I am used to playing this type of game, uh, TF2, I even played Brink competitively for a short time, but the distance you spawn in this game is pretty large considering the maps are so big. Not so much in this map I'm playing right now, because it didn't take that long then, but there have been others that I've been thinking that it's just taking forever. Uh, obviously it's faster for some heroes to get back depending on your skills, but it just feels like it takes forever to get back to the battle sometimes. This could also be down to that I don't know the maps you know, like really well, so I don't know the quickest route. Uh, but generally I feel like it takes a long time. We're pushing onto the B objective now so we might actually win pretty soon. Uh, generally this game at its point, which is in beta of course, is to be honest really good. I can see how this would work in a competitive 
uh, eSport atmosphere, similar to how TF2 used to have a competitive scene. And I do see having some sort of eSport scene. I mean, we already have uh, big organizations picking up teams. A little unfair because, you know, the game's in beta, so it's not, not everyone has the game at this point, and people will have a large, uh, you know, it's more experience over newer players. But, uh, I mean, it's made by Blizzard, so I would imagine they're going to pump money into it. And the game would actually be great if you were in a proper team and everything is coordinated. Now I'm quickly going to go over some things that I don't like if there's time. Uh, there's no public visual feedback or you know reward for doing well. And what I mean by this is that there's no scoreboard. So you can't see how well your team is doing or how well the other team is doing or even how badly each are doing. Uh, you have no real representation of how people are playing. And I feel this leads to a low incentive to improve or play for someone other than yourself in a team-based game. It needs to add a scoreboard which has uh, meaningful values like a healing count or a shield count, a damage count and so on. This also leads to people not really wanting to play roles like the tank or healer because you're spending the entire game playing a role with no representation of how well you did or what you're doing so you're not really going to be killing people either so it's like you just don't exist. I just think this makes it become more of a solo experience because you can't see how well your teammates are doing, uh, only yourself. Maybe they'll add it because it's only beta, but wow, okay I'm destroying. We might have actually just won because of that. Uh, but yeah, that's my biggest problem with the game right now. Well, I think we've won now. I think I just gotta keep these people out with some serious rockets. Well yeah, since we're gonna win, uh, my overall first impression is that it's very good for this style of game. There's a lot more I'd like to talk about with it, uh, and especially some heroes with like stupid aimbot skills, but there's not enough time in this one. So there we go, we win. Very nice. This end screen is where you can use like those cosmetic things to change how you stand, I think. Oh, I'm the player of the game. This is a pretty cool feature actually. It basically takes what it determines the best play, and it shows it at the end. Which is quite nice actually, because then you get to see what someone on your team or even the other team like what they did to stop or to you know do something good that helped you a lot in the game that you wouldn't have necessarily seen when you were playing. Here you have the MVP votes which happens at the end of every game. I'm going to vote for myself because I'm a boss. Honestly I find this pretty pointless as they don't actually offer anything but something to click after the game. I think they should make it mean something or at least add how many votes you've won in your profile or something I don't know. And then you've got your standard XP screen. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the levels in this game are actually uncapped, so you can just go forever, really. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure, though. Anyway, that's my first impression of the game after playing for about two hours. I'm going to be playing a lot more now that I have it, so maybe I'll make some more videos on it. Not sure yet. Uh, any questions about this video or the game, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. This feels like a pretty good run so far. Crisp, fast aim.